Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Suma Saad from Jamia Hamdard University, New Delhi. And the topic is Stability Testing, paper Product Development Part 2. First of all, we are talking about learning objects. In this module, we will study about what is stability testing of pharmaceutical products, what are the requirement of stability, design of stability study, and in the last, what is the shelf life and shelf life determination. So what is stability testing? There are legal, moral, economic and competitive reason as well as reason of safety and efficacy to monitor, predict and evaluate drug product stability. Pharmaceutical product, example tablets, capsules, cream, injectable and inhalations and the components of a drug products that is the active pharmaceutical ingredient and the inactive ingredient should be stable in the drug product for the proposed shelf life duration of the drug products. Shelf life is the time period during which active and the inactive ingredients and drug products are expected to remain within approved shelf life specification. Provide that they are stored under the condition defined on the container label. Stability applies to chemical, physical, microbiological, toxicological and therapeutic property. Stability and storage condition are determined by evaluation of quality parameter with time under the influence of variety of environmental factors such as temperature, humidity and light. A stability product is one which retain its chemical integrity and label potency within the specified limits, retain its appearance, uniformity, dissolution and suspendability, its resistance to microbiological growth and whose therapeutic effect remain unchanged without any significant increase in toxicity during the shelf life. Section 505B of the CFR law as stated on the new drug application from specifically described the requirements for stability information as a complete description of and data derived from studies of the stability of the drug including information showing the suitability of the analytical method used. Describe any additional stability studies underway. Stability data should be submitted for any new drug substance for the finished dosage form of the drug in the container in which it is to be marketed and if it is to be put in solution at the time of dispensing for the solution to be prepared as directed. State the expiration date MAT will be used on the label to preserve the identity, strength, quality and purity of the drug until it is used. If no expiration date is proposed, the application must justify its absence. Good manufacturing practice that is GMP regulation and guidelines allude to the importance of stability and shelf life of pharmaceutical products. In addition to GMP requirements, several guidelines are published by organization with international mandates such as the WHO and the International Conference on Harmonization specifically to address pharmaceutical stability. The ICH has published a comprehensive series of stability guidelines covering different aspects of stability. For example, ICH Q1A R2 stability testing of new drug substance and product. ICH Q1B photo stability testing of new drug substance and products. ICH Q1C stability testing of new dosage form. ICH Q1D bracketing and matrixing designs for stability testing of new drug substance and products and ICH-Q1E evaluation of stability data. Some of these guidelines have been adopted and published by the FDA. In this section, the stability and shelf life of pharmaceutical drug products are revived and information derived from GMP regulations and guidelines as well as technical and regulatory guidelines documents on stability. 
the importance of photostability study for stability indicating method development and for appropriate container closure section to assure stability of marketed product through shelf life is discussed recommended storage condition for various climatic zone are discussed the testing parameters for evaluation of stability of various dosage form are outlined now we are talking about stability requirements the guidelines for industry q1 ar2 define requirements for submission of stability data with drug application in the eu japan and the united states A selection of batches and container closure system at least three primary batches of the drug product with the manufacturing process similar to the production batches intended for marketing are used for generating stability data the three batches of the drug product should use different batches of the drug substance where possible at least two batches should be pilot scale plot scale and the third batches can be of the similar size for stability studies drug product should be packaged in the same container closure system as proposed for marketing of the drug product the strength and the container size of the proposed packaging configuration should be placed on stability unless bracketing and mattressing design are used mattressing and bracketing design mattressing and bracketing design are used to achieve reduced testing while at the same time generation enough stability data for evaluation of shelf life at a subsequent sampling time point different set of samples of the total number would be tested the design assumed that the stability of the sample tested represent the stability of all sample the difference in the sample for the same drug product should be identified as different batches different strength different size of the same container and closure and possibility in the same case different container closure systems mattressing can cover reduced testing when more than one variable is being evaluated for example a one half reduction in the time points eliminates one in every time points from full design and other third reduction elimination one in every third time points the bracketing design assumed that the stability of any intermediate level is represented by the stability of the extreme tested where a range of strength is to be tested bracketing is applicable if the strength are identical or very close related for example in a third batch stability study with dosage strength of 50 75 and 100 mg in 15 100 and 150 ml containers testing for 50 and 100 mg strength in 15 and 150 ml containers may be adequate mattressing design may involve elimination of some stability sample pull time points to achieve reduced testing strategy now we are talking about storage condition and testing frequency the stability guidelines provides information on storage condition and testing frequency for the drug products under six intended storage condition number 1 drug products intended for storage as room temperature number 2 drug products packaged in impermeable container number 3 drug products packages in semi permeable container number 4 drug product intended for storage in refrigerator number 5 drug products intended for storage in freezer point 6 drug product intended for storage below uh, -20 degree centigrade the storage condition are summarized in the table uh, which is shown on your screen the drug product is said to undergo significant change if a 5% change in assay from initial value is observed or if product fails to meet the acceptance criteria for potency point 2 any degradation product exceeding acceptance criterion is observed point 3 an expected change in physical attribute such as color face acceptation hardness is observed point 4 products fails to meet acceptance criterion for ph 
products fail to meet acceptance criterion for dissolution. A storage condition for a stability evaluation of pharmaceutical products which is shown on your screen. The sample frequency and testing in stability study should be targeted to generate data sufficient to establish a stability profile of the drug product. For long term storage stability studies, the guidance recommend testing every 3 months over the first year, 6 months over the second year and annually thereafter through the proposed shelf life for drug products where the proposed shelf life is at least 12 months. For a 6 month accelerated storage stability studies, sampling at 0, 3 or 6 months when significant changes are likely to occur under the accelerated storage condition, increased testing is required with inclusion of a 4 sampling point. If intermediate storage and testing become unnecessary, a minimum of 6 months of data from this study should be submitted with the application. When significant changes are likely to occur under the acceleration storage condition, testing at the intermediate storage condition for 12 months with sampling at time 0, 6, 9 and 12 recommended. Now we are talking about climate zone concept. For conventions in planning for packaging and storage for the stability study, international practice identify four climate zones which are described in the table which shown on your screen. The United States, Europe and Japan are characterized by zone 1 and zone 2. The value in each climate zone are based on observed temperatures and relative humidities from which mean kinetic temperatures that is MKT and average humidity values are calculated. Earlier to 2005, climate zone 4th A and 4th B were combined and designed as climate zone 4 which was proposed to have hot and humid climate 30 degree centigrade MKT and 75% RH. India was proposed to belong in climate zone 4. Finally, manufacturers must decide whether they are seeking a local or signal country application versus a global approach. This decision will be largely define the stability condition. Climate zone and associated mean kinetic temperature and average humidity value which is shown on the screen. Now we are talking about the testing practice. Stability testing practice. Stability testing is included at all the stages of drug product life cycle from early stages of product development to late stage follow of stability in particular the life cycle can be divided into six stages these stages are shown on your screen depending on the stages of stability product type and dosage form the product is analyzed at intervals for various parameters. These parameters may include assays for the active ingredient, measurement of known degradation product, dissolution time, appearance, etc. Additionally, sample from production lots of approved products are retended for stability testing in case of product failure or production process changes. Retented sample can be tested alongside returned sample to determine whether the root cause of the problem was manufacturing or storage related. Some specific related tests for variable dosage form are shown on your screen. Design of stability studies. Designing a stability study requires the following aspects to be taken into consideration. Preliminary stability data. 
the preliminary stability data may provide scientific justification to the selection of the type of stability study design. During the drug product design phase, the stability data are generated to choose the final package, configuration and storage condition. Such data are helpful in the development of good stability study design that can offer as much as information as possible with as few data as possible. Drug product attributes and specifications All attributes that may affect the quality of the drug product have to be included in design of stability study. These attributes have to be tested at every time periods and thus the number of sample needed at each time should be set accordingly. The specification for each attribute of the drug product is also required to define the acceptance criteria of the stability testing. Test methods. All test methods used in the stability study should be previously qualified and validated. Preliminary testing data. Any data generated during the development and clinical trial phases of the drug may be useful to determine the acceptance manufacturing process variability. The process variability is an important factor to define the sampling plan to be used in the stability study. Design factors. Identification of the appropriate design factors is crucial when choosing the design of the stability study. The full design requires testing the drug product for factor combination and at all the time periods. The full design provides the largest amount of information. However, the number of required combinations increases exponentially with the number of factors. On the other hand, a reduced design required drug product testing only at a fraction of factor combinations. When variables are higher, matrixing design are better than bracketing designs. Failure to identify a relevant design factor may cause a significant delay in the stability completion. A design of a stability study protocol is shown in the figure, which is shown on your screen. Stability data generation and handling. In this past few years, stability testing has been revolutionized by two highly technologic advancement, high pressure liquid chromatography that is HPLC methodology for analyzing drug product stability and the computer for stability data acquisition, storage analysis and reporting. Most assay methods described in the official compendial drug monographs are not stability indicating that is the assay is not capable of differentiating intact drug from one or more of its degradation products. In other words, the assay lacks specificity for the active ingredients. Nearly all new drug products being developed today use HPLC as the method of choice for analyzing the stability of dosage form. Since the FDA has become more demanding and its requirements that products expirations dates be based on stability data obtained using stability indicating assay method and such data analyzed by valid statistical calculation. HPLC and the computer have been become essentially its dispensable tools for fulfilling these requirements. Photostability studies. The testing should be done in a sequential manner with the fully exposed drug product and as necessary followed by testing the product in the immediate pack and then in the marketing pack. The photostability guidance provides recommendation for the light exposure obtains to which the API or drug product should be exposed. Two light sources are recommended. The first light source is the artificial daylight fluorescence lamp with the combination of ultraviolet and visible outputs xenon or metal halide lamps. In the second light source option, the sample should be exposed to be both the cool white fluorescence near UV lamp. 
it is recommended that the near UV lamp having a spectral distribution from 320 to 400 nanometer with a maximum energy emission between 350 and 370 nanometer be used with a significant portion of UV in both bands that is 320 to 360 and 360 to 400 nanometer. For confirmatory studies, the samples should be exposed to light providing an overall illumination of not less than 1.2 million lux hours and an integrated near UV energy of not less than 200. Dark controls covered with an aluminium foil to protect from light should be placed side by side with the light. Exposed example, the use of validated actinometer solution or calibrated radiometer or lux meter are recommended to ensure that the samples are exposed to desired light exposure. Result of the photostability study should help in number one, identification of precautionary measures needed during manufacture and packaging. Point two, container closure design for protection from light. And number three, is storage condition and light protection required during shelf life of the marketed product. Now we are talking about the expiration date. Expiration dating of pharmaceuticals correspond to the determination of an expiration dating period or shelf life for drug products and retest period for drug substance. The expiration dating period or sh shelf life of a drug product is defined as the time interval that a drug product is expected to remain within approved shelf life specification provided that it is stored according to the label storage condition and that it is in the original container closure system. The expiry or expiration date is the actual date placed on the container or label of a drug product design, the time during which a batch of the drug product is expected to remain within the approved shelf life specification if it's stored under defined condition and after which it must not be used. To arrive at an expiration date, it must be determined first for how long and under what condition a pharmaceutical formulation can meet all of its quality specifications. In general, this issue is answered through stability testing that monitor chemical and physical product attributes as functional of time, temperature and other environmental factors. Good manufacturing practice that is GMP requirements for drug stability section 211.166 expiration date section 211.137 and FDA guidelines for stability study section 98 contain significant and specific information related to conducting stability studies and assigning expiration dates. The important features are listed in the following summary. Each product's expiration date related to the specific storage condition is stated on the label must be based on data obtained from an appropriate stability testing program. Such a stability program would include a number and size of containers per sample time, testing of drug product in the marketed container closure system and appropriate storage condition and the last one is an adequate number of batches usually at least three production batches to be placed on long-term stability testing for a new product initially and the one production batch per year thereafter expiration date must be derived from data obtained using reliable and specific stability indicating assay method for the active ingredients tentative expiration date can be assigned based upon data from accelerated stability studies as long as it can be shown that such accelerated study are scientifically sound that that long Term studies are long conducted to confirm the predicted expiration date. It may be appropriate to utilize 
an increased sampling frequency toward the end of the expiration dating period. A roll of thumb for solid dosage form allow a two year tentative expiration date at a room temperature if the date has retained 90% of its original potency after 90 days storage at 40 degrees centigrade and 75% relative humidity. Long term stability study should be attempted to determine the time at which the lower 95% confidence limited curve of the mean degradation line intersects the acceptable lower limit for drug degradation. If the drug product is placed in a different packaging system, it can retain its expiration date if the packager can assure the FDA that the repackaged container closed system is as good as the original package and that all product specification can be maintained throughout the dating period. Now we are talking about the determination of the shelf life. The more desirable stability data are from actual shelf life studies using a products in the container closure system stored under label condition for introducing new product to the market, however, or for making material changes in the process, formula, or container closure system of existing products, one cannot wait until all the needed stability data at room temperature are generated. Therefore, appropriately designed and executed short terms. Example, three months. Accelerated stability study have been accepted by the FDA as data based for use in extrapolating longer room temperature expiration dates. Use of accelerated data is obviously not a suitable for actual shelf life study. It is a mean of predicting shelf life of a product based on scientific principle and guided by experience. This method of shelf life prediction based on short term accelerated stability data is currently well utilized by pharmaceutical scientists. Now, Arrhenius relationship for stability prediction. The Arrhenius equation has been used by pharmaceutical scientists in predicting room temperature stability of drug products based on data obtained under exaggerated condition that is higher temperature rate of degradation. The main step in the process are number one drug products B is stored at several elevated temperature. Point two determination of the order of reaction by plotting stability data at several elevated temperature according to the equations relating decomposition to time for each of the order of reaction until linear plot are obtained. Point third, value of the rate content K at each temperature are calculated from the gradient of these plots. The logarithm of K is plotted against reciprocal temperature according to the Arrhenius equation which is shown on your screen. The graph is in the figure which is on your screen represent a plot of K values obtained at several elevated temperatures. Since the plot is linear, the prediction of stability at shelf life temperature is possible by extrapolating the curve to the lower temperature and reading of the K value for the lower temperature. Once the K is obtained, it can be used to estimate the time for T10% degradation with the aid of equation. Estimation of degradation for accelerated data first order case is shown on your screen. The degradation data obtained at long term intermediate and accelerated storage condition. Note the data in this example is artificially created and will be for demonstration purpose only. All value are expressed as a percentage of the label claim using only the data at higher temperature that is 30 degrees centigrade and higher. Estimate the assay values at 25 degrees centigrade as a function of the time. The long term data that is 25 degrees centigrade is usually not available when a new drug application that is NDA is submitted and that is why it is pre from calculation. Solution 
for first order kinetics the first step is to be obtain the natural logarithm of the concentration which is done in this table then these value are graphed as a function of time whether a straight line should be obtained as shown in figure the slope of each line correspond to the value of k1 which is shown in the bottom part of the table next a plot of in k1 versus 1 upon t is prepared with the three value of k1 one for each temperature as shown in the figure note that absolute temperature should be used here for equation the value of k1 can be extrapolated to t is equal to 25 degree centigrade 1 upon t is equal to 0.003354 k inverse to then predict the drug product assay as a function of time the values of slope and intercept are shown in the interest of figure the calculation is shown on your screen once the specific reaction rate is calculated the drug product shelf life can be calculated using the first order shelf life equation and its solution is for zero order kinetics the original concentration can be graphed as a function of time which is shown in the table a straight line can be drawn through the point even if the actual degradation order is 1 because of the degradation is small less than 10 percent as seen in the figure the slope of each line correspond to the value of k naught these value are shown in the table next a plot of in k naught versus 1 upon t is prepared with the three value of k naught one for each temperature which is shown in figure the value of k naught can be extrapolated to t is equal to 25 degree centigrade 1 upon t is equal to 0.003354 k inverse using equation to then predict the drug product assay as a function of time the values of slope and intercept are shown in the insert of figure the calculation is shown on the screen once the specific reaction rate is calculated the drug product shelf life can be calculated using zero order shelf life equation now we are talking about the limitations limitation of the arrhenius relationship for stability prediction there are a variety of situations in which arrhenius predictions can be erroneous or invalid higher temperatures may evaporate solution thus producing an equal moisture concentration and different temperature at higher temperatures there is less relative humidity and oxygen solubility thus hindering the predictability of room temperature stability of drug sensitive to the presence of moisture and oxygen for dispersed system viscosity is decreased as temperature is increased and physical characteristics may be altered resulting in potentially large error in prediction of stability different degradation mechanisms may predominate at different temperature thus making a stability prediction marginal at best now we are talking about the other technique for stability prediction simplified graphic technique have been employed to predict the breakdown that may occur over prolonged period of storage at normal shelf condition a technique for liquid products where the decomposition behave according to the general kinetics law for example the plot in this figure which is shown on your screen shows that the degradation is following a first order reaction the time for the loss line at the several temperature at reach 90 percent of the theoretic potency is noted by arrows on the curve these times value at different temperature are plotted in this figure and the time for 10 percent loss of potency at room temperature can be obtained from the resulting strength line by extrapolation to 25 degree centigrade if the extrapolation data in figure show that the time to reach 90 percent potency at room temperature is too rapid to provide an adequate shelf life for the product it is possible to determine the overage required for the product to maintain at least 90 percent potency for a prescribed time 
This is accomplished by drawing the lost line representative of the 90% potency value at room temperature as shown in this figure. Then a line is drawn parallel to this form of desired shelf life back to zero days. The example shown in this figure indicating that by the use of a 10% overage, the product now takes about twice as long to fall below 90% of labeled claimed during shelf life. Canon described the construction of uh, certain kinetic parts which can be used for purpose of comparison during formulation development work using a standard kinetic equation. He calculated the path that reactions would follow if a 10% potency loss in two years at room temperature were permitted. By choosing equations, energies of 10 and 20 calorie per mole, both of which are conservatively low and by plotting the time in month that a formulation would take to drop to 90% potency versus 1 upon T, one arrive at figure and table present the data used in figure which is shown on your screen. If the potency of the formulation is found to remain above 90% of its original concentration after storage at the various temperature for certain periods of time given in the graph and table, there is good assurance that the formulation will meet the requirement of a two-year shelf life. Thus, if the assay are over 90% of the original concentration at the minimum time shown indicated by the 20 calorie per mole line on the graph, at the respective temperatures in all probability, the assay will be over 90% after two years at room temperature. If the assay remain over 90% at the maximum time shown indicated by the 10 calorie per mole line on the graph, it is a certainty that a potency of over 90% will be maintained after 2 years at room temperature. It is evident from the foregoing discussion that considerable information can be gained on the stability characteristics of a drug through the use of certain physiochemical principle. Since more pharmaceutical preparations are complex, the degradation reaction may be completed by possible interaction of the several ingredients in the formulation. It becomes impractical and is usually unnecessary to perform through basic kinetic studies on the final formulation to obtain an estimate of the shelf life of the product. It usually insufficient to follow the degradation or some property of the degradation as a function of time at several elevated temperatures using the kinetic expressions presented and then to extrapolate the data to unbind condition to obtain an estimate of the shelf life of the product. Thermal stability of pharmaceutical solution and suspension can be estimated by applying an accelerated non-isothermia. Kinetic method at suitable interval time and temperature are recorded and sample of drug products are placed in the thermostated water bath whose temperature is increased at programmed intervals. The drug samples are assayed or plotted at long concentration versus time at the particular temperature. The point of non-isothermal degradation curve shown in the figure are fitted according to a polynomial regression equation which is shown on your screen where f is the concentration function and a, b, c and d are coefficients. The rate constant at each temperature are then calculated from the first derivative of this equation which represent the slope of the tangent line at each point of the curve. Arrhenius plots are then generated and the predicted rate constant at room temperature is calculated. The advantage of non-isothermal kinetic studies is the short time period required to generate the data for estimating stability. Disadvantages include the need for programmable and sophisticated temperature control equipment and the decrease in experimental accuracy in predicting product shelf life. 
the importance of stability testing in the development of pharmaceutical dosage form is well recognized in the pharmaceutical industry. Increasing filling of abbreviated new drug application that is ANDA and paper new drug application that is PNDA by generic and non-generic drug manufacturers have resulted in an increase in submission of stability data to the Food and Drug Administration that is FDA. With the coming of the biotechnologic age and as bioengineer products become ready for testing in human. Stability test data for these compounds are required as part of submissions of investigational new drug application that is AND to the FDA to assure their quality and safety. This increase in stability testing has come at a time in which the Empire method have for the most part been replaced by a more scientific approach to stability evolution using various appropriate physical and chemical principles. Thank you.